Grandpa uh, contacted Bell. Bell was in Boston, where the company originated. Uh, Grandpa was in Washington, D.C. He moved there from New York. Uh, and the famous Thomas Watson, remember Bell's uh, report that where he had cut his hand in the laboratory and he yelled, Mr. Watson, come here, I want you. Uh, Watson was his assistant, and Watson heard his boss's voice through a telephone because they had one in each room. And that was the first uh, communication over the phone that anybody had ever heard. Uh, that was the man who was sent to see Grandpa, and uh, after seeing what Grandpa had, he said, uh, Mr. Berliner, you will hear from us. We will want that. Uh, they did. And uh, uh, it wasn't until Grandpa's invention actually occurred in 1877, the year following Bell's introduction of the telephone. Uh, that is when, and it was not until 1878, uh, believe it or not, that the Bell system acquired it. Now, what did they pay the old man for? Mm -hmm. Well, the young man, he was 27 at the time. Uh, he was offered a princely sum. And the amount was $50,000 for the patent. Now, it's interesting that the Germans say he, got, he was offered $75,000. And the Canadians say, that's you folks, whether you know it or not, he was offered a hundred thousand. Let's use the lower figure. Be conservative. Let's say he was offered only at fifty thousand dollars. Now his German friend said to Emil, uh, oh, putting it out of context, he was also offered stock in the company instead of the cash. His German friend said, Emil, don't trust him. <laughs> First of all, Western Union was dominating the communications business. They had made moves to get into the telephone business. Uh, they had acquired an Edison transmitter patent. Uh, the Bell system could go broke. It could never get lost, it's possible. Do not take stock in the company, take the cash. And so then Grandpa made his first of many mistakes. He, yeah, you guessed it, he took the cash. Uh, he was earning $3 a week, selling household housewares to housewives door to door. He was called a drummer, by the way, that was the word for it. He was drumming up business, and uh, at any rate, he said, uh, uh, he told Bell, uh, I'll take the cash, and he got the cash. Uh, by the way, Bell's financing came substantially from his father-in-law, who was uh, whose daughter uh, Bell had married, uh, and uh, in the United States, the land of opportunity, and uh, 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 he had connections and uh, used his connections to obtain financing for the American Bell Telephone Company. Um, anyway, that, and his daughter, uh, uh, what's his name? Vale, Miss Vale, uh, was, uh, uh, was deaf and Bell was a teacher of deaf people. That's how they got together and uh, that's how they ended up. Anyway, here's Grandpa with his 50 grand. Many years later, the American government breaks up the Bell system. And the official divestiture day was uh, January 1, 1986. Now, how much do you think his $50,000 worth of stock that he refused to take 
was worth on January 1, 1986. A few more zeros. A few more zeros. <laughs> yeah. On the left side of the decimal point. Uh, would you believe 86 million? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> It's one billion eighty-six million. Oh, no. oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Now, when I meet Grandpa later on, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to say. <laughs> I've already rehearsed it. <laughs> Grandpa, couldn't you have taken ten percent of stuff? <laughs> you would have got forty-five grand in cash. That would have been enough for you. And uh, just think, we'd have a hundred million dollars for all your, your heirs. Uh, at any rate, that's my... <laughs> uh, as you know, uh, Edison, uh, Edison's uh, uh, transmitter patent, which, by the way, used the loose contact principle, uh, was acquired by Western Union they immediately sued Bell for uh, uh, infringement on Edison's patent. Bell showed them the Berliner caveat, which had been filed in the U.S. Patent Office. The patent had never been issued, which is another story which we'll touch on very briefly. But at any rate, the caveat showed that uh, Emil had applied for a uh, loose contact uh, design patent uh, 13 days before Edison had it. Therefore, the Edison patent, which had been issued, was worthless. Uh, the result of that was that Western Union agreed never to enter the telephone business they agreed to assign the Edison patent to Bell. They also uh, agreed that Bell System would acquire all the telegraph lines and all the telephone poles across the country that, they, that Western Union owned. And they even sold to Bell the, a company that they had formed called Western Electric, which became the manufacturing arm of uh, the Bell system, and all of the Bell telephones were made by a Western Electric company. It, Western Electric got its name Western from Western Union. And how did Western Union name come about? Well, I'm not sure, but I think this company uh, imagined itself as uniting the east of America with the West. Uh, that's the Western Union, as far as I can uh, uh, gather. So, that, uh, uh, that's uh, that story. And uh, Edison, of course, was furious because he was expecting immense royalties. And the upshot of the association between Bell and Berliner was that the Ber uh, Emil was given a job uh, uh, supervising the manufacture of telephones in uh, Boston and uh, uh, he stayed there for about two years. He then got permission from Bell to use the Bell Berliner patent in Germany and he formed the first uh, 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 telephone manu equipment manufacturing company in Hanover, Germany, the place where he was born. And uh, the, uh, 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 that company later, to bring it around to you folks, uh, became, uh, went out of the telephone equipment manufacturing business, began manufacturing records, and uh, the label was Deutsche Grammophon. So uh, that's how uh, that got, got started. Now, just wanted to, uh, uh, let me see, check my notes here, if I can read them. I think I was suddenly taken drunk at the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, 
Uh, yes, uh, one of the interesting observations was that Bell uh, tied up uh, with his enemy, Edison, very readily. Uh, Bell uh, was licensed by Edison to produce uh, uh, gra uh, uh, phonographs, and uh, 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 he formed the uh, 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 American Graphophone Company, which became the Columbia Graphophone Company, and he made a lot more cylinder phonographs than Edison ever made. Columbia was the leader in, in that field. And uh, so uh, here we have Edison, uh, here we have Bell siding with Berliner in one area and siding with Edison against the Berliner disc in another area. Uh, of course, when he started with Columbia, which is, of course, now the oldest record company in the world, uh, not the oldest disc record company, but the oldest record label in the world, uh, discs hadn't uh, come on the market as, as yet. Um, Bell observed a very interesting thing. Others had, but he was the most notable person to observe that the problem with Hill and Dale recording, which Edison had I instituted uh, by accident, because it was easier to record Hill and Dale than it was to record lateral, despite the fact that he stole uh, uh, Leon Scott's uh, uh, design. He stole everything except the, uh, 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 the lateral cut. He went to vertical cut. He never regretted it. He always fought for it saying that it was superior. Bell established that it was not superior because why? In vertical Hill and Dale recording, the needle going up and down makes uh, its indentation only in the downward motion. All it do does when it returns to its original resting point is come back out. It's just removing itself from the groove. So the recording was in effect half wave. Whereas in Leon Scott's method of recording, lateral, you got the full wave, left, center, right. So one of the benefits of that, of lateral recording, was almost twice as much volume. And I have to tell you something about volume. You'll love this. Uh, it was known very early that volume is uh, obtained by moving air. At any rate, uh, Grandpa uh, decided that one way for moving more air and getting more volume was to create this um, uh, multi -foam. and you've seen pictures of it. They actually made a few of them, and the uh, 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 the, the multi -phone was six gramophones playing six identical discs, powered by a motor, and it was said that over water you could hear the sound uh, two miles away. That was pretty good. There is another story about uh, Grandpa uh, using, uh, 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 attempting to get more volume, and uh, unfortunately, I'm not permitted to tell you uh, that story. It's, but I will tell you this: if anybody asks me, I'll take you aside and tell you. But in front of the group, I'm not going to say. It. <laughs> if you hear the story, you'll know why. Uh, anyway. Um, <clears throat> 